Welcome to Ericsson's IP Talk Radio, our regular podcast from the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm your host, Matthew Smith, Director of Network Marketing, and our guest today is Hawken Ericsson, Group CTO and President of Ericsson's C- Silicon Valley. Welcome, Hawken. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Hawken, you've been here in the Valley for roughly a year now, uh, and I'm quite interested in hearing your reflections on that period. Well, I think first of all, I would say it's good to be here, and uh, the the reasons why why I came has sort of all been fulfilled. We we are part of the ecosystem here in the valley, and, and and in different aspects. I think one is on the application side. We we have seen how how U.S. and especially the Silicon Valley is becoming a much more dominant player on the on the application side in the whole I- industry, mm. with the players like uh, of course Apple and and Google, Android, and so on, and 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 that is a important for us as a systems vendor to be close to that, to both learn uh, what the applications look like to so that the connectivity is application aware, as I usually say, but also to make sure, if to the extent we can, to explain how the connectivity works and make the applications connectivity aware so it, mm-hmm. it works both ways. But then, of course, we have many other partners here in the R&D uh, arena that work together with us in building our networks. And uh, we are also now the the largest vendor in, in North America. That's so right, yeah. many reasons for us to be here. But yeah. most of all, maybe because we run our IP and broadband business out yeah. of Silicon Valley. Yes. Um, and, and talking a little bit about North America, it, a noticeable trend here, which has been followed in the rest of the world, has been the growth in uh, video traffic in the network. Quite substantial growth, especially over the last year or so. Yes. Uh, it's, if we look into the networks now, we're predicting in the future almost like 90, 90% of all the traffic will be sort of video related and um, about 60% what we call internet video. So, of course, that that will have a big impact on, on how you have to handle the networks and and uh, both on the fixed and on the mobile side. And you asked what, what are the reflections after having been here for a year. When, when I came, we were going just out and announced uh, that we have now passed uh, voice with data in the mm-hmm. in the mobile networks and and uh, that has been the case on the fixed side for a very long time but so now both mobile and fixed network has have more data than than voice yeah. Yeah. and and that changes the whole the way you have to look at your network not only if you take the mobile side for instance you have had a business that where you have been counting minutes mm-hmm. and beginning to offer some data but the data that was offered was given away flat rate and yeah. uh, now when the majority is no longer minutes but it's data you have to to have a little bit more intelligence into a pipe and understand what's actually going on it's not it's not voice that is the dominant anymore it's what is sometimes called over the top traffic and and then how how do you as a smart pipe provider become relevant in that context and then you're back into the heart of what we are doing here in Silicon Valley. Yes, it's a, it's a very real challenge for operators, isn't it, to stay competitive where um, you know the over-the-top players from the cloud, for example, can be uh, taking a lot of the potential revenue that exists in the customer base. Um, yes, uh, and yes and no, because uh, it's uh, two, three things that you always talk about, or maybe two things. You talk about uh, how the world is going mobile and you talk mm-hmm. about how, how everything is moving to the clouds. Yeah. But for that to work, you need connectivity between the devices and the cloud. And and uh, that is what we're doing. And especially the IP part of the connectivity, and that's what we're doing mm-hmm. here in Silicon Valley. And, and also the the smartness in the pipe to do the deep packet inspection to do the quality of service classification and uh, set priorities guarantee latency a lot of these things that you can have as a toolbox as a provider a network provider to the over the top players if you want to to offer different services to different Mm -hmm. classes and also then correspondingly charge for that and and be part of the revenue stream in a very logical way yeah Exactly. Yeah, this area of uh, policy control uh, seems to be an important area where uh, newer and new developments are coming out regularly from this part of the industry. <coughs> yes, and, and here I think with our part of being very strong on the edge in both on the fixed and the mobile side and also strong on the access uh, and um, being able to combine that is a, is a very important asset mm-hmm. because usually on the access side, especially on the mobile side, you are... The, you are allocating the resources on a on the physical layer, so that's almost like a layer one policy yeah. server. While on the on the edge, it's more on the service layer that you you allocate the, the the resources, and then 
to have the, the layer one and the layer seven sort of policy server working in harmony is mm-hmm. important to get the total good performance of the network. And we can do that by having a strong presence on both the access and the edge. Absolutely. Um, one thing you hear a lot about from Ericsson over the last year has, has been a, um, a prediction of 50 billion connected devices by 2020. Um, this brings a lot of challenges, I imagine, for an operator, aside from the fact that they're having to uh, transform their business model at the same time. This is an enormous scale. Yes, it is. And, and uh, it's, I think it's mainly an opportunity, of course, because uh, not all these devices will, will uh, maybe s- transmit a lot of data, but they will have the value of the connectivity and will be willing mm-hmm. to, to pay for that. So that's sort of maybe some of them or a large portion of the 50 billion devices really come on the revenue side and on the resource consumption side of the, of the equation while other devices will be video cameras or surveillance cameras and so on that will consume a lot of resources. So we will see both. But the, it also becomes an, a matter of managing all these devices. It's a scale. It, now we have 5 billion subscriptions in the world on the mobile and say 1 billion on the fixed. Now it's a factor of 10 to get to 50 billion and that puts other challenges. How do you provision all these devices? How do you keep track of them and, and all that? And and that also again puts back and comes back into intelligence in the network to to keep track of the devices and, and uh, guarantee quality of service. And a, and a real need to scale the control plane just as much as you're scaling the data plane for all the bandwidth growth, right? Exactly. And also guarantee, because some of them might be alarm systems and so on that will not send a lot of data, but when they do it, it's important. So you have to guarantee that you have quality of service of what you offer. Absolutely. Um, I guess with 50 billion connected devices, we're talking about um, an internet connection being available on in many, many different environments from just what we see today. Maybe there's different verticals um, being attracted by this. Um. Yes, there are some sort of overlapping uh, visions and discussions. One is around the 50 billion devices that we have as a vision. Of course, from those 50 billion devices, a lot of them will talk to each other and then we call it machine to machine. And in that context, you also talk about the verticals. And uh, the verticals have got the name verticals, but they have usually been uh, sort of vertical implementation all the way down to the technology that you have had maybe dedicated uh, applications on dedicated technology. And when this moves on to, to 50 billion devices and to benefit from the connectivity, I don't think that we will low have the sort of luxury or the, it will be good to run it as complete verticals all the way down because that will not create the scale. So I think what we will see is these so-called verticals, if you call in in government or in, in transport or in utilities or in health, uh, they will be more like applications on top of a more horizontal platform mm-hmm. that will be based on the on the access and the edge uh, technology that we are building now for the data explosion. Exactly. And different types of access as well. I mean, LTE is starting to roll out, but I assume there's still great business in uh, fiber access as well for some of these applications. Absolutely. We will see fiber. Uh, for some of them all the way, we will see fiber combined with uh, wi- Wi-Fi to mm-hmm. create the wireless uh, aspect. Um, but if you have um, uh, access to, to uh, fiber, connectivity, you might go Wi-Fi and fiber, and then you have the, the cellular with LTE. So you have LTE, and you will see LTE together with Wi-Fi also. So Wi-Fi is more like a cordless technology sitting at the end of the two access technologies, say on the fiber side demonstrated by GPON and on the cellular side by LTE. Yeah, that's fantastic. And a fantastic view of convergence to end our discussion today. So uh, thank you, Hawken, for spending time with us today. Uh, and thank you all for listening to IP Talk Radio. We're always interested in hearing your feedback, so you can email us with any comments at iptalkradio at ericsson.com. I'm your host, Matthew Smith, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>